I very often find that the SVGs for those complex 3D paper craft creations can greatly vary when it comes to uploading them into Cricut Design Space. And there are a few different things that you need to consider and be aware of when you want to upload those crafts into Cricut Design Space and start creating them. My name is Kelly and let's get clacking. So of course the first step is to upload the SVG into Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to click on upload in the bottom left hand corner and here is where you can see I've recently been getting into the holiday mood and uploading lots of holiday type SVGs. So we're going to click upload image and you can either drag and drop your file in here or you can browse for the file that you want to upload. Once you have found the file and clicked on it in your browser window, it will upload it into Design Space. And you won't have to do anything else from here. The next step is the hard one. So we're going to click on Upload in the bottom right hand corner. Select the design and click Add to Canvas. Once it has been added to our canvas, we can start playing around with the design. You'll see that the design is quite small, so we will have to play around with the size. I'm not sure what exact thing you need to do to be able to maintain the size between when the SVG was created and importing it into Design Space, but I typically scale it up to as big as I want it to anyway. So I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger and I'm going to zoom in so that we can take a look at the file. Now, this particular file will need to have score lines. And you can see these lines here that are going vertical in this little green section. They look like they are just straight lines. And that's because they are cut lines. So when you import an SVG into Cricut Design Space, it can't tell whether the line is score, deboss, basic cut line, etc. So it will automatically put everything at a basic cut line. So you kind of have to go into the design and tell it what function to do where. So what we need to do first is I'm going to zoom out so we can see the whole design again. I'm going to first of all right click and ungroup. You can see the groups in the panel on the right hand side. There are several of them. So this would have ungrouped that one and that one you'll need to probably ungroup a few times a few different things. So this is now just the text and you can keep that text if you want but most of the time it's just telling you which pieces are which and I like to delete it when I'm not working with it but if you want to keep it there you can. So now we've got fewer pieces to work with. So with some SVGs what will happen is each of these sections will be their own group and some of them will have the cut lines or the score lines on a separate group and some of them won't. So in the case of this design the score lines seem to all be grouped together which is literally the best case scenario that you could hope for. Many SVGs that I have you have to go and individually select each of the cut lines instead of selecting just one group and changing them to score. So I'm going to select these cut lines. You'll see the operation at the top says basic cut. Now you'll just need to click on the drop down and then select score and you'll see it changes to a dotted line. That's how you know whether it is a cut line, a basic cut line or a score line. Another thing that you have to consider when working with these designs is that a lot of them will actually have numbers on them. Now the numbers you can absolutely score them with your machine if you want. But when you're looking at the design itself, you can see here in this corner that we have the number three. Now we all know that our crickets can both draw, score and cut. So what you can do in this case is to change those layers to the pen function. So while you're selecting the top layer and changing it to score, now of course this will vary depending on how this designer has set up this file. But in this case, the score lines and the drawing lines are within the same group. So this is where I go to the layers panel on the right hand side and I scroll through the layers panel and I look for the actual letters that I want to change. So here we can carry on scrolling a little bit further. 
When we click on that group of layers, you can see it takes us to a number. We can't really read that number because it's been changed to a score line, but if we had to leave it as a basic cut line, you can see that that number is four. So when it is a score line, again, you can't really read it, you'll need to change the operation of that layer from basic cut to pen instead of to score. And then you'll see it changes the look. Now you can actually read the letter. And again, every single SVG is probably going to be different. And unfortunately, you will probably come across different kinds of problems in different ways to what I've shown you here today. As an example, for some SVGs, the numbers won't actually import into Cricut Design Space. And I've found that the reason for that is the way that the SVG was saved or the program that it was created in is not completely compatible with Cricut Design Space. There are just so many different things that could go wrong. So when you buy an SVG like that, and if you have imported it into Cricut Design Space, and it hasn't converted properly where you can't see the letters, let's say you have a dragon head that's got 98 different pieces that you need to cut out, and you need those letters in order to be able to line them up correctly. What I would do is to contact the creator of the SVG and actually ask them to save it in a different format or a different manner that you'll be able to import it into Cricut Design Space. Perhaps when they saved that SVG, the technology didn't quite line up with what we have today and the versions are a little bit different. I'm, I'm just making things up at this point because I don't really know those technical sides of things. But I do know that there are different ways that you can save it and different updates that have been made to software where the software has gotten a little bit smarter and it'll now interpret things a little bit differently. So definitely contact whoever you bought the SVG from or if you know of a friend that can resave the SVG for you in something like Silhouette Studio, then they'll be able to do that and they'll be able to help you out in that way as well. So what I'm going to do from here is I can do one of two different things. One, I can just attach everything as it is, just like that. Or two, I can ungroup everything even further and attach each of the elements together in order to try and see if I can save space or optimize the space a little bit. And of course, we all know me, I'm going to do the second one. So I'm going to click on the lines that we've just changed to score lines, I'm going to right click and I'm going to ungroup. And if I try and click drag over that top little section and you see how it selects everything. The reason it's done that is because the green sections underneath are also grouped together. So in this file we have, or in this section, we have two separate groups. So all the score lines were grouped together and all of the individual pieces were grouped together. So we need to separate the score lines and we need to separate the pieces before we can join them individually to each other. So I'm going to click on the green section only and in the layers panel, you'll see it's now taken me down to where each of these sections that are going to cut have their own layer, which is what I wanted to see. So I'm going to right click there and I'm going to click ungroup and now when we do the same thing, so we click drag over the one section, you'll see it's now, there's nothing else that's been selected along with that one. So that is one element in itself, standalone, nothing else is touching it. So here I can right click and attach. And you pretty much want to do that with everything, with all of the other sections in this file. So just try and click, drag and select each different element, right click and attach. So now we have this little section, we're going to select that one. And I like to always, once I've selected it, you'll notice I've moved it away just to make sure that I'm selecting all of the cut lines or all of the score lines along with that section, because we really want to make sure that we don't have anything that isn't supposed to be there. So I'm going to right click and click attach. And same with the rest of the files, we're just pretty much going to do exactly the same, same thing over and over again until we have 
all of the different elements right clicked and attached together. If we take this bottom section one as an example, the way that we're currently zoomed out, it looks like it's a cut line. So what I like to do is I keep zooming in and out to make sure that all of the lines have actually been changed to score. So what I'm doing is I'm pressing control on my keyboard and I'm scrolling in with my mouse. And then you can scroll out with your mouse at the same time while you're holding down the control button. Or if you're not comfortable with that, you can click on the minus or the plus in the bottom left hand side of your screen. So I'm going to attach that one because I can see it's got a, a dotted line, which means that it is a score line. And I'm going to go back to the other sections and just make sure that they are all attached together as well. And then once I'm done with that, I like to see if I can optimize the space a little bit more by moving everything around a little bit and reorganizing it so that it uses up the most amount of cardstock and we don't waste any because I don't, I don't like to waste things very much. Then I select everything. So because I know that this will pretty comfortably fit on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, I'm going to right click, I'm going to attach these pieces so that they all cut in exactly that same location and I can move on to the next piece on the design. Now when you click on a new section of the design what will happen in the layers panel is it will automatically jump to those layers that you have selected. So as an example we have this section here which spells out the word brown. We don't need the word brown there because we can see that it's brown because the color is brown so I'm just going to delete that section. Now it says B1 times eight and then B2 as well. I don't need those sections because that's not how I work. So I'm going to select that group and delete it. And then for this particular section, there are no pieces that I need to change score lines for. So I'm just going to ungroup this section just because I don't like to have an extra layer in my layers panel and I'm going to then attach them. So they all cut in the same place. And then we move on to the next section, which we're gonna follow exactly the same process that we did before. So in, I'm going to select the design so that it goes to the layers panel. I'm going to select the words, delete those, those letters. And now we have all of the letters deleted that we don't want. And lastly, what I'm going to do is change the cut lines from basic cut to score. And then in the section, those lines also need to be changed to score. So I'm going to change those from basic cut to score as well. Now these parts are also grouped together. So I'm going to, again, ungroup them. And we're going to ungroup these score lines as well. So when I select this little section, it's a standalone. So we're going to attach that. And that section, we are going to attach that as well. And now we have our two different elements. We can optimize the space a little bit better, select everything and attach. Now we come to the sizing part of this. Now, just judging by this particular design, I can see that this will be quite a small one. This big green section that I have is the actual jar. This is a little, I'll insert a photo right here of what it'll look like that this jar is going to be about four centimeters. Now I don't want mine to be that small. I want mine to be a little bit longer, let's say around 10 centimeters or so. Now how I achieve sizing this up is very simple. I just select everything, make sure that everything is selected. And I use the grid on my canvas to try and size up my design. So each of these darker lined blocks are 10 centimeters. So I'm just going to drag everything so that it is around 10 centimeters tall. And once I have the right size, I want to make sure that this is going to fit onto a cutting mat so that the measurements are under 29.2 on either side. So here we can see the size, it's 21 by 23. So I know that the size will work perfectly for this. And these ones are smaller than that. So now I can cut and assemble my designs. If you want to know how to make a project 
really, really, really big to fit on your 12 by 24 inch mats, check out this video here as it'll take you step by step through the process of how to do it. I'll see you there and remember, be kind to someone today. See you soon.